How is it that we find ourselves surrounded by such complexity, such elegance? The genes of you and me, the genes of you and me, we're all made of DNA. We're all made of the same chemical DNA. Hi, you're listening to DNA Today, a podcast and radio show where we discover new advances in the world of genetics. From genetic technology like CRISPR to rare diseases to new research, we have you covered. For a decade, DNA Today has brought you the voices of leaders in genetics. I'm Kira Deneen. I'm a certified genetic counselor and your host. Non-invasive prenatal testing screening has been around for a decade now, as long as DNA Today, actually, and the technology has evolved in those 10 years. The screening started to detect Down syndrome, and now Billion to One's Unity screen assesses for the chance for pregnancies to have aneuploidies, which are extra missing chromosome conditions, recessive conditions like cystic fibrosis and sickle cell, and the presence of red blood cell fetal antigens. Billion to One named the screening Unity Screen as it brings together fetal screening for aneuploidies and recessive conditions. It also represents uniting pregnant patients in more equitable care. Unity does not require a blood sample from the other biological parent or sperm donor to assess fetal risk, enabling more pregnancies at risk to be affected with recessive conditions to be identified earlier in pregnancy as compared to traditional carrier screening. Billion to One is working towards one goal, to detect disease one molecule at a time. No early with one simple blood test. Visit unityscreen.com for more information. And be sure to check out our DNA Today episodes where billion to one experts join me to explore non-invasive prenatal screening for recessive conditions. That's episode 224. And red blood cell fetal antigens. That's episode 225. Did you know that among patients with documented mild cognitive decline, about one third progressed to a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease? As the Alzheimer's and dementia field evolves, new diagnostics are being developed, working to provide answers in more and more accessible ways. Quest Diagnostics is leading the way in making Alzheimer's testing accessible through assessing biomarkers like APOE isoforms and beta amyloid plaques with blood instead of spinal fluid. Learn more about Alzheimer's disease, including Quest Diagnostics' new risk assessments in DNA Today's episode 236. You can use the link in the show notes, also available at dnatoday.com to learn more about Quest tests. TrackGene has designed a genetics electronic health record. Here's what it features. Pedigrees, demographic data, genetics information, risk tools, and sophisticated reporting, all within a clinician-designed workflow. It integrates within other clinical genetic software, databases, and hospital information systems to maintain an accurate patient record. You can learn more in episodes 208, 210, and 237 of DNA Today. Use promo code DNA Today to get $800 off your subscription. That's a discount of 80% exclusively to DNA Today listeners. Go check it out at trakgene.com. Again, that's trackgene without the C.com to redeem the special offer. Joining me is Carolyn Walczewski, who is a genetic counselor for the Reverse Phenotyping Corps and the Genomic Service Research Program in the National Human Genomic Research Institute in the National Institutes of Health. That is a mouthful to say. I feel like I could use acronyms there, but I think it would have been even more confusing. So clearly, uh, Carrie's very impressive. Also joining us is Andre Alvarez, a participant in the Genomic Services Research Program. Um, Andre joined a genetic sequencing study at Morehouse College and received an unexpected genetic test result, which we're going to get into. So I'm kind of alluding to the topic for this episode. We're focusing on secondary findings and a study exploring what they mean for patients who receive them. And definitely stay tuned because we're going to do another episode similar to this where we're talking about secondary findings, but a different secondary finding with uh, different guests. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having us. So Carrie, I thought we would start with you as a genetic counselor by training and everything. Can you tell our audience a little bit more about what population health studies are, why it's helpful to look at genetics from a population point of view? Because a lot of times on this show, we're talking about like, okay, a genome or a diagnostic odyssey, looking for a certain condition. This is very different than that. Um, you know, we're looking at very wide scale. Yeah. 
I think with population health studies, what's important to consider is the, like you mentioned, the population that we're starting with. As you referred to, I think a lot of times in clinical genetics, what we're thinking about is somebody who is sick already or their family member is sick with some kind of genetic condition. And we want to do genetic testing to figure out, can we find a genetic answer or what is their genetic risk? With population health studies, we're taking a much more kind of disease agnostic approach where we're asking people in the general public to join a genetic sequencing study so that we can do genetic sequencing on a whole bunch of people and see what we can find out. Um, with out starting with a disease specific population, it gives us the opportunity to find out much more broadly what genes are doing in terms of somebody's health and development um, without, you know, starting at like the extreme end of illness that you might have um, when we think about like a typical population that might get sequencing through like a clinic, like a genetics clinic or something like that. And as you were pointing out, it's interesting because, I mean, a long time ago, we would not have been able to do this because of where genetic sequencing was at that 